Folks popping in, let's see. Hi Nancy. Hi Melaine. Hi Barbara. Good to see y'all. Hello, Heather. <clears throat> Hello, Gail Ann. <laughs> yeah. Hello for a Monday. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a Monday today. A little bit. Not too bad. Hey Pam, glad you were able to get connected. Wait a couple more minutes, it's not 4.32 yet. Always like to give everybody a chance to log on. Hi Alice, hi Carla. Diane. Good to see all these folks on today. Oh, there we go. Okay. Figuring out how the thing works here. Hi, Lisa. You'll need to come see this beautiful pillow that Lisa embroidered. Thank you, Pam. We got a few art pieces in the front when you come in the um, the door by the offices over here um, that uh, really nice, really, really, really nice, lovely pieces that uh, we had some folks bring in. So I hope you all will see those as you're coming in. And uh, I think we're going to do something similar again. We're talking about maybe doing something similar again uh, for Lent or for Easter. Hey, Nancy. Um, so, yeah. I just think that's really cool to see some of the stuff that, you know, talents and gifts and creativity that you didn't know people had. And uh, it always is a little surprise for folks. Like, oh, I didn't know you did you know this or that or whatever so okay okay 
Well, it is 4.32, 4.33 now, the clock, it's like it knew. Um, let me jump over here. So, the song that we're talking about, I told you guys it's Christmas, so we're doing Christmas Christmas season, Advent Christmas season. So, uh, we'll do these for the next probably few weeks. I, I'll probably do a, a, at least a couple past the Christmas, you know, because we're technically in Advent right now. Uh, but I know a lot of y'all probably have the Christmas songs on at, at home and, you know, we kind of listen all throughout. So I'm just picking different ones as we go through. Last week we did, uh, talked about Silent Night. And so today um, we're going to talk about uh, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. So uh, it's always uh, one of my favorites. Of course, I, I love all the uh, Christmas songs pretty much. Um, there's just some really beautiful ones. And I think there's something special about them. You know, we only sing them for a limited time every year, uh, and so it's kind of cool. You know, you get to um, you get to jump in and and uh, see those. So um, anyway, uh, hi Suzette, hi Maria. Uh, if you'll message the the church office um, about that, I know we have uh, things to help you guys out so um, call up here to the church office and uh, they'll be able to help you with that um, it's 944-4041 I believe that uh, or you can find that on our website or our web page but if you'll call up here and talk to those folks they'll be able to, to put you in contact with some folks that can help you so the song today uh, not clear um, it was written by a guy named Edmund Hamilton Sears, who was born in Sandisfield. I think that's how you say it. It could be Sandysfield. I don't know. It's in Massachusetts. On April 6, 1819, he went to Union College in Schenectady uh, and then to Harvard Divinity School. Schenectady. I think it's Schenectady. It's in New York. It's one of my favorite city names in the United States, Schenectady, I think that's right. That's, it's just fun to say. Anyway, he became a Unitarian minister, and he chose to devote himself to small towns in Massachusetts where he had time to study, think, and write. And at age 20, Calm on the Listening Ear, it's a Christmas carol based on the song of the angels in Luke 2, and it's very similar to the song that we're going to look at today, which is it came upon the midnight clear and he wrote that 15 years later now the focus of the hymn is the angelic request for peace on earth which is what we find in Luke 2 when those angels come and they sing the songs to the uh, shepherds which is going to happen at the Christmas program this weekend too so hopefully you guys will get to participate in that um, either watching online or, or if you feel comfortable come up in person now he wrote the hymn the one we're looking at in 1859 as the clouds of war loomed over the nation. And I thought it was kind of an appropriate hymn for today. Uh, not because I think we're on the verge of the Civil War, but there's definitely a lot of anger right now in our country about, you know, politics and just things that are happening out there. And um, I'm, I'm not trying to take any sort of political position. I, I, I do try to stay out of uh, politics as, as much as I can. I mean, you know, I have my opinions and thoughts. Um, but for me, as a minister, as for what I want to do with my life, I'm more concerned about how do we learn to live at peace with one another and how do we share the love and joy and peace of Christ with other people. And this last verse of the hymn that is uh, generally left out of hymnals for whatever reason, I thought was especially appropriate and I'll sing it here in a minute, but this is what it says. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And man hears not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. Well, I thought that was a... A beautiful sentiment and you know I think what happens is uh, there's something about presidential election years that sort of brings out the political and everybody and 
I think that's part of the fabric of our nation. I think it's part of what makes us uniquely American. I don't think it's that's a bad thing at all. Um, but sometimes it becomes really easy for us to lose focus on what's important and that and then our politics can sometimes ascend above our faith and and our perspectives start to get skewed because of all the things that uh, can be upsetting uh, to us about things that happen out there in the world and I want to be careful I'm not trying to say that our thoughts and feelings about political things don't matter that I don't I don't think that at all uh, and I'm also not saying that we shouldn't express those feelings or have them or that we shouldn't put them into action through our civic processes uh, like voting or running for office, those sorts of things. Those things are an important part of our society that we live in. But instead, I think what the message of this hymn is about and I think what's important for us at this Advent season as we look forward to the coming of Christ in this Christmas time is that there's something that transcends all of that, that transcends all of our human endeavors. And that's Christ, who has come, who will come again. And through Christ, we can experience joy and love and peace and hope now, today, in this moment. And why? Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. So I think even when we disagree, and we will disagree from time to time, that happens even with people that we're really close to, you know, it happens. I think it's important for us to remember, as often as we can, this song of the angels, that there's a song of hope that covers us, and that reminds us of the love of Christ, and it gives us a pathway to peace among all people. And I suppose that's a dream, <laughs> that maybe there would be uh, peace on earth, but I think it's a dream worth having and one worth pursuing. And uh, I don't claim to have the answer of how we get there, um, but I do know that uh, the love of Christ is involved in that process. So I hope that's encouraging to you today. I try to always bring something that I think will be encouraging and that connects to where we are, that connects to the song. So. Oh, let me put the, uh, here's the one I want to sing. There's the whole thing. There we go. Uh -oh. Okay. So if you want to, let's see if they can, yeah, there we go. And that's all these, I'm not going to sing all five of these. Oh, it put all the, well, it put all the CCLI stuff up there in two, which is fine. Um, if y'all don't know what that is, since I put it up there by accident, uh, the CCLI is um, the, Christian licensing company and we uh, faithfully like many other churches do and should do um, we pay a yearly fee to them so that we can sing a lot of the songs that we sing uh, particularly the contemporary songs that we sing like on Saturday nights or sometimes on Sunday mornings um, and that's so that the artists and musicians who've made this music will get the compensation that they've earned from uh, creating this music and as an artist myself, I think that's really important. So it's something really important that we do and that we're faithful to do here. And that's an important thing that we do um, because it's the right thing to do. So anyway, um, let's sing this one together. It came up on the Midnight Clear. I'm going to just do, uh, let's see. I'm just going to do just three verses. Uh, I think I'm going to do the first one and the fourth one and the fifth one. But you might find... Um, something of comfort in one of the ones that we don't sing. I don't know. Uh, it came
says we always need hope isn't that the truth every day so don't forget this weekend is Christmas program I hope that you'll get to either come or watch we're gonna live stream Friday and Saturday and um, and then there will be a Sunday uh, particularly for if you don't want to drive at night that was part of the reason I wanted to do that because I know there's a lot of folks that don't like to drive at night and I totally understand that because I don't like to drive at night very much either because uh, I have trouble uh, seeing at, at night because of my my eyes so uh, we've got several church folks that are involved and we've got some community folks that are playing with us and um, I, I think you guys are gonna enjoy the message of Christmas and uh, a message that we really need right now so um, appreciate you tuning in and, and, and sharing and there's a way that you can share about the Christmas program too uh, you can share from our Facebook page and um, there's an event that you can share uh, that if you just go to events on our Facebook page you can share that so uh, I hope that you'll do that and let folks know and, and like I say uh, even friends and family that aren't from around here they could tune in and watch online uh, on our Facebook page so uh, really cool that we have this technology that we can do all that. Don't forget on fourth at 4:30 on Wednesday, that one of the pastors will bring uh, a devotional. So you want to tune in and, and see see that when that happens on Wednesday. And um, like I say, I appreciate you guys and appreciate you being supportive. This has really been a difficult year, and uh, I'm grateful that we're moving into. A new year that seems to be filled with more promise and hope and let's we're gonna pray that that um, that we see all those things come to fruition with these vaccines and things and that we we see this pass into history right so let me just say a, a, a quick word of prayer and and as a close for today father we thank you that you do give us hope in all things beautiful story of Christ that we are going to tell this weekend and that we cherish and that we celebrate during this season we thank you that we have hope and that we can find peace through your spirit through the love that Christ gives to each and every one of us and I ask that you would help us to be those people of light and people of hope and uh, even when we disagree with one another that we would find ways to reach out and to love the people that we know each and every day I thank you for the ministries here at our church. We ask that you would continue to bless uh, Sierra Vista, that we would be a light in this community, and that we would just be able to reach out and share the love of Christ with the people here in San Angelo and in this area. We thank you for all that you do for us each and every day and just for loving us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. <laughs>